Hello everyone, today's video is on how to take apart these Sarsilmaz 2000 or better known as SAR 2000 and that will be the same way to take down the SAR K245 which is the same as this uh, 2000 except it will be a 45 and the same as the B6 from SAR. The B6 is the same upper but a polymer bottom and that will be also as good for the CM9, which is also the polymer bottom, but a little bit more modern or wider uh, upper, which will be the same as the SCR P8. So all those guns will be the same to take apart and some other time for you as well. Probably also the easiest CZ clone to take apart. Minimum amount of parts, really easy but don't take my word for it just check it out first we're going to remove the grips which are my old grips for my sp01 cz and by the way those one fit the sar and this is only for demonstration because as you will find out you have no need and no reason to remove those grip but to replace them as people who are used to CZ will realize there is no brake plate here, nor hammer spring. Modern CZ clones have done with those springs, so you don't need to access the bottom part of the gun. The spring now is that long in here. So let's take it apart. Like any other CZ, you take it apart by removing the sliced up, let's start with the usual removal of the spring, barrel, we are going to remove the firing pin, for this you have a plate to remove here and to do so you need a small object, small screwdriver, small something to push down on a pin and with the punch you are going to slide the plate down a little bit and push it with your finger. Watch out, that uh, firing pin is on a lot of pressure and it will go fly if you don't retain it. So let's push down the pin. See, already the uh, plate has moved. I'm going to drag that plate out. And here come the firing pin. And you will see the block, safety block fall out. Usually it does fall, yeah, there you go. Here we have the firing pin spring the firing pin, the safety block, and the safety block spray. All we need to remove now, and that will, you will only do it maybe every 1,000, 1,500 rounds, is to remove the ejector. For this, you are going to push the pin from there. You need the right punch. And I'm using a five, 64th. By the way, everything you see here from the regular punch to the punch with the ball, which you will need to remove pins, hollow pins, and that vice. All this will be under that video on the description. All right, let's remove that pin and don't drive it through it. You, you can but it will be easier on you if you push it three quarter of the way. And that's good, let's find out. Yep, okay, you can see that pin is still on. And here is the ejector with the spring. That's it for the upper. Now, if you are making that gun, it's this time to have a brush with some solvent, brush it around Remove the, uh, the dirt, oil it, and then put it back together, which we are going to do right now. So you need to put back the spring. There is a hole in there that will fit the spring. There is the ejector. Now, this part here is pretty thick, so you cannot really push it. You have to insert it that way and put pressure on the spring. You are going to have to put pressure on the spring, pressure on the front, and drive that pin. So I came up with a little solution is reinsert 
the barrel, reinsert the spring, and the pressure of the barrel will be your third hand. It will hold, as you can see, that uh, ejector that way. All you have to do now is push it this way and drive that pin. Okay, it's somewhat capture. We're gonna finish it the right way. Uh, no, we will need the hammer still. There we go. There you go. Now you can drive that pin this way or that way. Now we're going to remove the sear block and that's how the vise becomes very handy. Well, I went too far. We need to push that pin. That is a safety. And then the block will come out. Before we can remove that pin, it's not going to go anywhere until you move that spring. And I like to use a small Phillips screwdriver. This way the spring will fit right in between the groove and it will be a lot easier to move around. And on the side you have a small notch and you're gonna carry that arm into the notch. Now you need a punch, but not one with a ball, just a flat punch. And when you push it, I'm going to push the uh, safety out and the pin will take its place. Okay. Well, or not. It's out. And this is a safety and we'll talk about that little detent in a few minutes. All right, here is the sears, carrier, sears and spring, three parts. We're going to take it apart right now and to rebuild it because it's so darn easy. All right, I need another punch, small one. I'm gonna drive it right through here. There is absolutely no resistance. There you go, the pin is out. Watch out, that spring will go fly as soon as you remove the punch. All right, one, two, and three. You have the sear block, the sear, and the spring. This is amazing. The, the simplification of that gun over the years is beautiful. Okay, so what do you do? You take the uh, block with the ejector or the pusher. This pushes the uh, when the, the uh, slide goes back onto the gun, it will carry the uh, empty shell that will push here and the extractor that grips here will pull out the round. So, the extractor toward you. This part here needs to go this way. Nope. This way. And you are going to. No, let's start with the, the, this um, pin. I'm going to start it slightly. Then we move the sear to the uh, come on, baby. There you go. You want to ride the pin through the sear. There you go. Now you don't want it to go past the sear because you're going to insert that uh, spring. So I'm going to take my pliers. That long string will go into the slot here, and this one, the short one, will go lay against the frame. A little bit too far. The mustard will be a good tool to use. All right, let's push it in, and let's push that pin in. Or oh, even better, I take a punch. Align it on the spring. There you go. Now I have to push my pin to push the, the punch out. Yeah. There are different ways to do this. And right now I'm hurting my finger. 
Okay, let's do this another way. They, as I said, there are a few different ways. I'm going to try the other side because my left hand will be available to push the pin. Insert, push. Trust it. There you go. There, and that's it. You see, really nothing bad. Make sure everything is working. The sear is functioning properly. Oh, by the way, you can see the. Uh, uh, I had about hundred rounds through that gun and a lot of dry fire, and it is starting to polish the side, which is double action, and starting to polish the side that is single action. That's why I don't do any polishing. I let the shooting of the gun do the polishing itself. And at that point, it will polish exactly where it needs to be polished. Like this part here is already finally bright and polished. And the rest is coming along. Okay, let's go back to the... Uh, let's talk about the hammer. Hammer is also one pin right here. But I'm going to push it from this side because I work usually, that's personal, I work my gun pushing toward this way and the pin comes out the other way as I like to have them stay on the frame if I can. All right, so let's take a punch. Drive that pin out. Okay, now the pin is still being retained, and let's see if the hammer is free. And it is free, beautiful. Here you have the hammer, the hammer strut, and the hammer sprang. For those who are used to see the CZs, instead of the spring being here, it's that long coming through the frame. And that is a lot more practical, a lot easier. All right. Well, uh, we're not going to put it back yet. We're going to remove the uh, trigger assembly. Well, same thing. We need to remove that pin right here that holds the entire spring, also from this side of the frame, and to get a smaller punch. Okay, watch out, that spring is gonna fly. There you go. I don't know if the trigger is free. No, the trigger assembly is still hold by that pin. So a little bit of a push. And if you go all the way through, well, no big deal. You just have to put back the pin. All right, it's out. And finally, the magazine release. You have that pin here and one inside. So we're going to use my grip there. Uh, well, I can just pull it out this way. Uh, you might want to put your finger on the magazine eject on the side with a hole because once you remove that pin, there's a small pin under pressure with the spring. It might be flying. I've never seen it do it, but it could happen one day. And if it does happen, good luck on finding it. Finding it is very small. So, finger on it, pull out. This done, you see no or barely any, any force. And the pin I was talking about is, let me show you from a close up, right there. So you have a pin and a spring behind. Okay, now your lower frame is absolutely fully disassembled, except for those two pins if you want to remove them. But I try to simplify my life and leave them in the frame, let's put back that magazine eject. By the way, if you want to switch it around because you are lefty, 
now is the time to do it. It will be exactly the same as what we are going to do, but the other way. So you insert this pin, it's a matter of which direction it goes. So it is, it should be this way, but again, it doesn't matter which direction. Or we can also go deeper into this here to remove that spring. For cleaning the gun, you don't need to. The only reason you will need to remove that spring is if you want to upgrade that spring. And in the future, uh, probably my next video, I will go through the details of where to get springs and what to do with those springs to improve the trigger of that handgun. So let's put that uh, pin in there. And then you need a pretty small punch to place inside the uh, magazine, magazine eject. You, you can push it, the magazine eject is not going to go anywhere because it's retained by that pin. So we're gonna push it hard to push that clip detent. Now you push on that pin down. I like to use another tool because it's pretty hard on the finger. So push this one, then the one down, then release that punch there and everything is in. All right, next, the trigger assembly. There you go. Um, I'm going to have, well, to drive that pin through, I want to make sure that pin is going not into the frame of the trigger assembly, but right into the hole. So I'm going to help it out with driving that punch. Okay, what to do now is to drive it through. Okay, yeah, I don't know if you can see, but that pin is coming out slightly, maybe a bit too much. Uh, might be okay. If it's in the way of the spring, I will have to hammer it back out a little bit. All right, we want to put that spring this way, long arm on top through that uh, frame and the small arm on the bottom through the trigger right here. So small one here, big one there. And while I'm doing this, I'm bringing back my punch to capture that spring. at the extremity of my um, pliers and I can see that that pin is not in the way there is still plenty of room all right so the small spring down um, if you have problems pressing against that plier I have the perfect tool which is a nemostat because they soft lock here punch through the hole and drive the punch through. Okay, I'll release my nemostat. All right, so my punch is going through the frame, through the left side of the trigger, through the spring, all the way to the punch. Now I have to drive the punch through the spring. And a little bit, oops, I don't want to get in my frame. Okay, I am through. The other part of the frame. Now I'm going to lay down my gun. I have a better hammer here but I cannot use it on the pin. It, it just eat up my hammer. It's too soft for that. So I have to use... Uh, I have to use this hammer to hit it. Now I can use the punch. flush on both sides and everything works beautifully. Next, the hammer. For the hammer, I need that spring. Don't forget to uh, to oil those parts. Grease this one before you put them in. This strut in there. That arm above the trigger arm. Push down and then 
hammer. Oh, no, 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 my punch, right, right, right. right. The punch here to drive through the... Uh, through the hammer. There you go, no. Uh, have to find the hole. I will put that returning piece at the end. I don't need it right now. I just need to find... Okay, now I can move this down. And I hammer that pin, pushing my punch for the other side. And... Yep, that pin is already returning the hammer. Let's finish it off. flush and I'm flush beautiful last will be the sear block and to put it on you need to do two things one you need the uh, safety ready and on the safety you have that little punch here it won't click here until the gun is pretty well used. So the safety will only go so far up to that pin. And then we'll push that pin in and push it back. So have it ready to go in. And then on the uh, sear, you can try to put it in. It's going to be a nightmare until you push on the sear during insertion and all the holes are going to match. And that's when you put your safety in. So push on that sear. Oh, my mistake. Don't forget that spring here. It needs to go up. There we go. For the safety pin to go through. So push the sear down. Insert. All the holes will be matching. Yep. And that's it. It's almost at the end, except that little pin is holding the safety from going through. So you want a very thin screwdriver. Again, there will be a link down below to uh, show you where you can get those. Push a little pin inward and push that way. There you go. Safety in. Before you go any further, do not forget to push back that spring here. A lot of you are going to forget and you might be losing that safety while shooting your ground. This is not a good affair because the slide might be uh, catching on the free sears and it will be a mess to take it apart. So very, very important to put back that spring. So everything is good. Everything working great. Uh, the gun is almost fully reassembled. Let's do the grips. And those grips are standard Uh, CZ grips from my SP01. They don't fit 100%, but I will say at 98%. And they look really nice. Those are Packmeyer. I will leave a link down below just for those as well. This way you don't have to do your own research on which one. And the Packmeyer, when I bought them, were cheaper than all the other G10 grips. And they are really good qualities. Okay. Now, the upper, I need to put back the, I need to put back the firing pin safety block. And for that, you have the spring going into the block and facing this way, the flat will go up. There you go. Now, this is the pin spring. Where's my pin? firing pin and there we go don't forget to oil stuff you shouldn't put too much oil on this uh, pin because dirt will come in and uh, it's still good yeah um, so just a clean would be sufficient here you might want to put a dab of oil all right you push that pin with that flat here not the long flat but the short flat up 
this way. Push the safety pin down, insert. Okay, now that's where things will fly if you don't do it correctly. So wear some kind of glasses. I will need a punch. This one is perfect. You need to insert that plate while pushing that pin and the block. So, it's sometimes tricky. I like to use a bigger punch sometimes. Push the block. There you go. Now you can see that pin is way in the gun. I can put that plate while releasing the final pin slowly. Right, almost there. Probably need something smaller to push the pin. on camera <laughs> it's going to fly if I don't be careful there we go done it Janet there we go okay and finally the Baron the record spring back into the gun, one click on the hammer, that will allow you to go all the way down, back to the slide stop or slide release, and we are in business. And this was the full takedown of the SR2000. People, good luck, have fun with your gun, if you have any questions, please Give me a comment and again all the parts i've used today will be on the bottom comments until next time see you